Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is uh, the Bitstamp chart off of BitcoinWisdom.com. And you can see that we've had a very dramatic move in the last a um, little bit more than 24 hours here. You can see uh, Bitcoin was trading at 450 and it hit a low of 350. And uh, everybody's asking, what's going on? What does that have to do with? Well, it's my opinion. It has to do with this. Cripsy threatens bankruptcy. If you remember, I told you uh, back in November to get all of your coins off of Cripsy because things were acting very funny. It was very difficult to withdraw coins, and I had to spend days to get my Florin coins and my Light coins and the rest of my coins off of Cripsy. Well, here it is. You can see here's the update. Um, Cripsy has been taken offline. So you can't even get to the website now. It really only stayed up for one day. They put a strange message on there. We'll just read the article. Embattled digital currency exchange Cripsy is now claiming that it is insolvent. The exchange alleges in a newly released blog post that it was the target of a hack in July of 2014. If you remember, I predicted in November that Cripsy would be defunct by the end of the year. I missed by two weeks. But now they're saying the hack happened all the way back in 2014. Now that's going to raise a lot of questions. An incident that it said cost approximately 13,000 Bitcoin, about 7.5 million at the time, approximately 300,000 Litecoin, 2 million at the time, so we're talking about $10 million. Unless the funds are recovered or a buyer is able to cover the losses, the post continued, the site will be shut down and bankruptcy declared. The acknowledgement of insolvency and the hack claims come after months of customer withdrawal delays comparisons to the now defunct Japanese Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox and the filing of a class action lawsuit against the exchange. Cripsy said it has outstanding liabilities of approximately 10,000 Bitcoin or roughly $4.15 million at press time. The site, which previously said it would suspend trading and withdrawals indefinitely, has been taken offline as of press time. Cripsy said that Cripsy said that it did not disclose these losses at the time and continued operating, meeting its funding obligations with trade income, and it quotes the post. Further claims pointed to the developer of an altcoin, uh, the Lucky 7 coin, as being the person behind the attacks. Prior to today's post, Cripsy had claimed technical problems as a source of withdrawal problems. Now, if you remember my video, I showed you how uh, things went into pending and how to cancel them, and it was very clear to me at the time it had nothing to do with uh, technical problems. It was very clear uh, that they have been deceptive the entire time, and now it's coming out that they were hacked. Uh, they've been insolvent. They've been running a Ponzi scheme, and this is really important for you to understand because a Ponzi scheme can go on for a long time. Uh, what they had been doing recently was, uh, for those of you who understand cryptocurrencies, they have cold cold wallets and hot wallets. The hot wallets are live. They have the coins in them. The cold wallets are put into storage, so there's not transactions being done um, on a on a hour by hour basis into those cold wallets. Well, they had taken most of the altcoins, put them into cold wallets, and they were uh, allowing withdrawals as as deposits came into the hot wallets, which were the live wallets. So uh, that's the reason why we were able to get our coins off of there. Those of us who got our coins off of there is because as others were depositing them, uh, we were able to pull them off. And that's really sad because, uh, you know, Cripsy never put up a message saying, hey, uh, you can deposit here, but you can never remove anything. It's like Hotel California. It's like a roach motel. You can check in, but you cannot check out. They never posted that message. So that was really sad, but those of us who are watching it knew that was what was going on. Um, Cripsy suspended trading last week, and again this week, the latter incident allegedly tied to a phishing attack that targeted customers' email addresses and phone numbers. Yesterday, two Florida law firms filed suit in federal court on behalf of affected customers. The exchange said it did not report the incident because it didn't want to cause panic. So back to what I was saying. This is a demonstration to you of how they were running on those hot wallets. They were basically just taking existing investor uh, deposits and, and sending them out to the, the withdrawals. 
and and this apparently went on for over a year so if, if you make an analogy and think about something like the US and uh, the dollar and the petrodollar standard and the Federal Reserve and all all the pensions and Puerto Rico and all this stuff it's clear here that you can make these things go on for quite a long time even though the underlying uh, asset isn't there it's insolvent but it's just a matter of having the public lose trust and one of the big things that caused the trust to be lost was that uh, there was a thread on Bitcoin talk that's the one that I was active on and uh, just en enough people asking questions enough people trying to take their coins off and then when they filed those class action lawsuits that was enough to make everybody question it and when that happens that's a tipping point and uh, we could be having a tipping point in a lot of things very very soon uh, I'm gonna get to the charts here in a second so I'm not gonna spend much more time on that uh, I personally think Big Vern or Paul Vernon um, the guy who basically is Cripsy I think he's gonna go to jail just like Mark Carpellis of uh, uh, at Mount Gox fame and uh, Paul Vernon actually you know was registered under FinCEN the KYC know your customer rules and uh, it was in Florida and uh, it was under federal regulations it's been kind of suspicious how the feds have been very very quiet on this but uh, if you go to the Bitcoin talk thread uh, where this has been going on for months now a lot of the people there have been talking about how they've been talking to the ABC agencies etc so this is going to be interesting uh, Coindesk says this is a developing story so let's get to the charts here this is an interesting comparison chart that I pulled uh, the news is coming fast and furious uh, it's crazy it's hard to even follow the markets uh, this is a cross of the WTI crude contract over the silver spot contract and what I want you to notice here is that we're still in this absolute freefall on the WTI you can see that a price of twenty nine dollars and sixty three cents for oil and the stuff I've seen lately uh, uh, very reliable people trustworthy people who are talking about ten dollar oil and I'm not going to discount this anymore because we have broken down below this support and that was the last um, financial crisis and we are definitely down below that now interestingly enough we are not down below it for silver you can see the disconnect with silver is quite clear silver had that bottom in the last financial crisis we're right here um, about uh, 14 bucks whereas you can see with oil uh, we've got a downtrend line so the divergence now between silver and oil is telling me that uh, the deflation pretty much is unable to pull silver any lower now I may be wrong it may round down and turn down if it does I don't believe you're going to be able to get the silver I think the premiums will simply expand and the price will not remain the same so let's jump over real quick to the stock market because the action in the stock market is absolutely scary and I told you uh, in the past when I did the article I'm sorry the video on the Dow 30 that uh, we have these three tops that we're looking at and you can see that uh, here here and now here uh, this is a pretty consistent pattern and you can see that we really haven't even uh, started on our way down here uh, let's get it to the weekly and get a MACD on here uh, so when we're talking about things like the potential bankruptcy of Puerto Rico or the stuff that's going on in Illinois or other stuff uh, really we haven't seen anything yet as far as percentages something like they've seen in China with massive massive moves we haven't seen that yet 
And uh, when we see that, and it's my prediction, we will see that in the Dow, then you're going to have a whole type of sea change as far as assets. I've talked about Myra before and how the Obama Myra program, there was something behind that. If you remember, the Myra program is a, uh, a type of IRA or 401k for the average citizen, which has a guaranteed return. And that's based on the treasury. And when that was proposed, I think it was actually the State of the Union about a year ago before this one that Obama just did, which, by the way, has been decimated by Peter Schiff and others, uh, that Obama is now he's he's uh, in la-la land. He's in a state of complete denial and delusion as he talks about how good the economy is because the economy is not good. But a year before this most recent State of the Union, he talked. He introduced this Myra. Now, at the time he introduced this Myra, it was absolutely ridiculous and absurd because what it offered was the average guy to buy savings bonds, essentially, with a guaranteed rate of return of whatever the CPI was or something like that. Now, at that time, I said, that seems like a stupid deal. No, nobody would want that unless they crashed the stock market. Now, if you think about a, a 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 90% decline in stocks, and uh, with the um, low interest rates, with the ZERP rates that have been in place for nearly seven or eight years now on on commercial paper and bonds, um, the pension funds don't have any returns. So they've been piling into stocks to try to generate some kind of returns. Same with mom and pop and retirees. So when they see their portfolios decimated by 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90%, then things like Myra, which have a guaranteed rate that can never lose, are going to become very attractive. And based on that, that's why I predicted that uh, they're going to crash the stock market to make those things an option. So let's get over to the main story of the night. This is this uh, Chinese Silver Fox article. And uh, this is an interesting speculation from Bill Holter on uh, JS Mindset. And a lot of people have been asking the question of where the silver is coming from. We know the the US Eagle program has been setting records and we also know that the mining supply coming out of the US has been decreasing so we've got physical metal being purchased by Americans setting records and we've got physical metal being mined by Americans uh, setting records on the downside so how's this gonna shake out well this is the theory from uh, the latest theory from Bill Holter and uh, I'm going to read some of this and then comment on it. Submitted by Bill Holter on JS Mindset. I recently had a long and very interesting conversation with John Embry of Sprott Resources. It is always good to speak with him as I consider him one of the five sharpest economic precious metals minds I know of and certainly value his opinion. John's name came up a couple of days ago when someone asked, where is all this silver coming from to meet the outsized physical demand? I said, this is the number one question John Embry and Eric Sprott have been asking for about a year now. Our conversation was quite broad, but let's zero in on the silver supply aspect because I believe it's more important than anything else in our world today. That's a very big statement, but stay with me as you will see toward the end why I believe this. John asks, where is the silver coming from? Let me first say... What follows was my best educated guess, and I know of no one who has the firm answer and hard answer. I told him during the 80s and 90s the amount of scrap could be a very logical explanation. Then during the 90s and early 2000s, silver deficit could have been explained by the huge amount of silver recovered from the Manhattan Project. Now that's a whole nother rabbit hole. I really don't want to go down right now, but... Uh, for those of you who believe that that actually happened... Uh, I've been a skeptic for many, many years about things that seem to be unscientific, uh, things that seem to violate the laws of nature, we'll say, and certainly aren't biblical. But in the last month or two or three, and I'll just say there's some things I haven't shared with you, 
because I'm not ready to share them. But uh, my belief or skepticism in some of these things has been shaken. So anyway, uh, it's believed that there was a lot of silver used in the Manhattan Project, estimated nearly to be 1 billion ounces. I also believe the Chinese lent somewhere around 300 million ounces of silver U.S. back in 2003 for a 10-year term, which expired in the magical year of 2013. If this was true, it would explain the massive paper takedown in May of 2013 because the lease was up. I believe silver had to be taken down as the price was getting away and threatening $50. Actually, that was in uh, 2011 that was threatening $50. Uh, collapsing price would allow the U.S. to say, don't worry, you'll get your silver back as we have the price under control. Here's what I believe the silver to meat delivery has come from, China. But why? First and foremost, China was a silver nation and had used silver as money for longer and in greater quantity than any other nation. In other words, the silver has come from only one place. It could have because China had it. Okay, but even if China was the only large stockpile, why would they throw good money after bad if they were already defaulted on? I believe they wanted the crown jewel of the West, gold. So I'm going to stop it there and tell you why I think that this speculation may be valid. Now, if you remember uh, the speculations from Eric Sprott and those who have talked about the Opium Wars, uh, I can't remember, uh, Professor uh, uh, Fateki, I think is how you pronounce the name, uh, I'm sorry, Fiketi, uh, about the Opium Wars and... Uh, how China was busted multiple times with silver, how they devalued the silver and collapsed the wealth of China. So this is an interesting speculation. It may actually be the case that China has decided, you know what, uh, we have the ability right now to take up all the silver. In fact, anybody, really, even any billionaire has the ability to take up all the silver. It's uh, I've talked about it multiple times about uh, silver billionaires, etc. No one's allowed to buy silver except the little guy. But uh, China has been caught and busted multiple times trying to accumulate wealth with silver. Uh, and uh, the West has beaten them. Now, it may be the case this time that China has decided that, you know what, we're going to take the gold. And uh, we're not going to bet on silver this time. In fact, we're going to use the silver to get the gold. And then as soon as we have enough of the gold or all of the gold or whatever gold they decide that is necessary to accomplish their ends, uh, then they're going to pull the plug. Now, that could be true. Uh, even if it is true or if it's not true, either way, I believe that silver will rally with gold. Uh, it will have an explosive move to the upside. I believe that, uh, honestly, this is my honest opinion, uh, and I could be wrong, but I honestly believe that silver and gold will rally together. I believe that they cannot be divorced from each other. If silver rallies because of a shortage, it's going to pull gold with it. If gold rallies because of Chinese accumulation, it's going to pull silver with it. Or any number of scenarios that you can choose. I believe that these two are going to rally together. And ultimately, I believe that silver is going to accelerate way to the upside uh, once the rally begins. And we'll talk to you next time.